this video we will discuss about JUnit XML reporter module. So if you use JUnit XML reporter module it requires two options. One is the file name. The default file name is xunit.xml. If you want to override that option then you can use this file name parameter with the file name whatever you want to use. So here in this coding I am using junit underscore report dot xml and it has another option that is data source. In the data source we specify the pass fail criteria. It's a module name and you can see here the pass fail module name with the criteria that is average response time if it is greater than 10 milliseconds for 7 seconds then I consider this as a failure and this failure will be noted by our Jenkins so that it will not promote the build. So this helps us to track the pass failure criteria of your test and we can see that report in our Jenkins as well. So let me take you to the Jenkins and explain you how we have configured this to show you the graph of a failure criteria. Here is my Jenkins code. Here is our JUnit XML report uh, project in the Jenkins. So you can click on this and I go to configure. So here you can see the project right? and this works with our source code. The source code is there in the GitHub, uses the GitHub information and uh, when we are going to execute that Taurus JMeter script with report option. And here under post build actions, you can add the post build action. So that's what we have selected here. So publish JUnit test result report. And here you can specify that XML file name with uh, the health report application fact. Okay, so that's a default value. Once you click save and uh, execute this, So you can go to build now, click on build now and click build schedule. So you can see that the code is getting executed. Just go to console report. Click on the console output. You can see that the code is getting executed. Right. And uh, it is configured and you can see the blaze meter report will also come here and you can see the report uh, with how many virtual users you are getting executed and note that here we got the alert saying that there is a criteria that uh, some average response time is going beyond 10 milliseconds for 7 second so the pass fail criteria is met and so that triggered the shutdown as it is failed okay so remember that we have given this in the code as pass fail criteria and at the end you can note that it has finished with the failure code and you can also see here a non-zero exit code so you can see here the code finished with failure status and it also have non-zero exit code. So we'll go back to the project and I click on this and we click on the test result. So in the test result you can see that uh, the code got failed so you can see the failure status here with how many steps it got failed, uh, how much duration it took for that and you can click on this to go to blaze meter and see the status. So that's about the test result and then we go back to history. 
So in the history, you can see the graph here. So this is where the graph will be displayed. For this, we need to execute uh, this report module multiple times with different test criteria configuration. So that you can see the graph plotted over here. And that completes this video. So for your reference, the XML file will be created in the default uh, workspace, whatever you have mapped in. So I'll show you where it is. So if you <coughs> so if you click on console output, so here you can see the path for your artifacts directory. So it shows here that the artifacts directory in this the JM JUnit XML report will be created in this path. So that uh, that is based on the artifacts directory that you have configured. So here we have configured to this path, so it gets created in this path. 